this book called Live Your Dream in Seven Days. And so far we've done three chapters. It's, there are seven days. And uh, we've done three days. So today uh, we uh, will start on the fourth day. The fourth day. And I love to call it the D subject. Everything that starts with D, uh, in this case, most times, it's not very exciting. So we will have uh, tried to look for any other way of going through it without necessarily uh, page, page by page. But there are pages that can be uh, skipped so that you can read them and uh, meditate on them. It's always a book to be meditated on. So it's a, a nice uh, meditation book uh, to reflect on your life and see how it's going. So this fourth D is called disappointment. Uh, disappointment. Disappointments in life. And this is one of those toughest things that or uh, toughest situations that people go through, toughest lessons, disappointments. Today, if you look at our society, we have what I call emotional breakdown. Many people are going through what they were really not prepared for. You start a business, you experience hiccups here and there, you give up. Others end up killing themselves. We start families, we end up through trouble, 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 crisis, trouble, trouble, crisis, trouble, trouble, crisis. And this is the way our lives have become. But then how do we handle that? So we can read briefly on this and then we can start our discussion on the same. I know each and every one of us is experiencing some degree of disappointment one way or the other. And we say it's a way of life. So if you have your book, you can check uh, that chapter four, which starts on page 117. Disappointment, a way of life. If there is one thing you will have to contend with in your journey to living your dream, it is this ugly animal called disappointment. Armed with the first three Ds, your first D being the dream, which is actually your destination, if you wish, or the predetermined worthy ideal. Your second D, which is determination backed by a burning desire. And the third D, which is discipline, you should not find it hard at all to disappoint your disappointments. It is a discipline too. Disappointing your disappointments, that is. Disappointments, I say it again, are a part of life. And that is the way you should treat them. This is why many people talk about developing a thick skin in your pursuit to success. That means you refuse to, worn out, to be worn out. You cannot let go. You cannot quit. In other words, quitting is not an option. You started and thus you must finish. Successful people do not know the meaning of quitting. Disappointments will test your degree of resilience and focus, your level of determination and discipline, the strength of your desire and belief. A quote, Every problem is a gift. Without problems, we won't grow. By Anthony Robbins. You will be stretched beyond the elastic limits and more. That is growth. You will feel pain, feel like a failure. You will certainly feel stupid. Nothing will make sense. And in many instances, quitting will seem very palatable and most welcome. This is the time of following the blind faith. No evidence except perhaps in the mind, but you must pass the test. You must pass this level before you see the success you're looking for 
it is actually an indicator that you are on the right track. As I am told, a wise guy once said, you always know when you're on the path to success, it is uphill all the way. You will certainly realize that this agrees with some of the wise statements you might have heard before, like it is darkest up down and the rest. And in our culture, we have a saying that a boat capsizes toward the shore, which means it is when the destination is near that people give up, that failure overtakes well-meaning people who are following their dreams. When I had set to achieve a direct level in my network marketing business, this was and still is a very prestigious level in the company. My mentor told me the following. Remember that your enemy, the devil, is not happy uh, with your resolution, with your success. You are going to meet the greatest hurdles ever in this business. You are going to be tested before you're trusted. It is when your success is near that the devil fights the fiercest, the hardest. Stay alert and focus on winning. I understand that better today. The reason I must tell you this is not to discourage you, but to encourage you. It is because I do not want you to quit. I want you to eventually live your dream. To be forewarned is to be forearmed, I am told. I used to get excited to be told of the problems I'm going to meet on the way before that, uh, because that prepared me beforehand. And thus, I did not have to be surprised, though some tests along my way seemed to be endless. Indeed, some of your problems are going to be, appear to be endless too. But every time I would meet these difficulties, I would be assured that I'm on the right track. So should you. People get excited when they get assurance that they, are, they have not lost the direction to the, their destination. On the path to success, the road signs are usually the troubles you meet. Without them, you better be sure you are not doing the right thing and thus cannot expect to get the right results. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, anyone else with that book, you can read that next uh, page, uh, that, that next part, uh, the winning formula. <clears throat> Every pursuit has a big toll to pay and everyone and everyone at one point or the other has felt like quitting. My first experience of calls was when I was looking for school fees to join secondary school. I had to make just one more than year outside before finally joining a school to start my secondary education. A critical pre-qualification to university education. Again, it happened when I was supposed to be in year three, but had to leave and go to look for fees. It was not easy. My benefactor, the deputy head teacher then, had just been transferred and thus I did not have anyone to reason out my case. That was the time that that was the time many people advised me to quit and concentrate on what can get me income so I can start my life, taking care of my siblings. I took again over one year outside school before miraculously finding my way back to class for just less than 10 months before sitting for the final exams. Many times I almost let go, but the dream inside me would not let me. I knew all my future was paged on my education. Actually, there are people who still doubt if I surely did the final exams. They cannot explain how I went to college. Some still have no idea that I even went back to school and even college. The only thing they know about me is that I dropped off school. Later, after being in employment for over three years, I joined a big business of network marketing, which really came to me at the best time. It did not take long. 
it did not take long before I started feeling that I had done a mistake. My goal was to be financially free and to keep myself and family in optimal health. It was clear to me that the job I was doing was not going to guarantee these things, while this had been my dreams all along from childhood. I could see already people who are following this business path and were doing much better, or at least seemed so, living the kind of life I wanted to live. So when I started my business with enthusiasm and was, and was for once able to visualize where I was headed, I hit a snag. Things were not happening as I had expected. People were quitting on me. Some of the distributors I managed to sponsor into the business did not last. Others took off the same day they started. I never saw them again. Some of them, even after talking big and promising great time ahead in business, still vanished in thin air. I kept wondering what others were seeing that I was not able to see. I almost quit. It is at this point that a friend handed me a book by Robert Kionsky entitled Rich Dad's Cash Flow Quadrant. It was the rescuer, the reason I was still living my dream. After I read this first chapter, Why Can't You Get a Job? I understood better the path I had taken. It was not the path for the majority, but for the minority. I remember how he narrated the story and explained the emotion. Values are the core in the four different quadrants. How he almost quit and went to make a call to his rich dad to inform him of the new resolution. And what did the rich dad tell him? <clears throat> you can always quit, so why now? was his reply. This was the answer. It took me a couple of weeks trying to digest this message, which was shortly followed by, you will win if you don't quit. Later, I understood the, meeting, the meaning, there are always opportunities ahead to quit. So you don't have to quit at this point. Just remember, just remember this every time you think, like throwing the towel. Kiyosaki, Kiyosaki says, what his rich dad reminded him, the reason he got started. Remember why you started, he said. So if you have been contemplating quitting, are you quitting because you have a better way or you have achieved your goals? No. So keep on keeping on. You will win if you do not quit. Not everyone necessarily meets the disappointments. Some are a little lucky not to meet many of them. And perhaps you could be among the lucky few. Others also only experience a moderate level of disappointment. But if you are like some of us, starting with nothing, no $1 million, no big name, no inheritance, and of course, not in a first world country, you may be a little as, as unlucky as many of us, but you can still make it. So just in case you are yet to meet your fair share of disappointments, and you are currently wondering where the heck could be what the heck where the heck could they be coming from i'll take a short while to explain a few sources this will enlighten you a little bit and give you some degree of resilience where they when they actually occur thank you i think we can leave it there it's a good time it's a good chunk that we can use to digest uh, i know we are at different stages of life and uh, this thing must be speaking to us differently. Others have passed what they felt was the biggest disappointments. Others are yet to. Others are going through it right now uh, and uh, maybe contemplating, quitting, giving up, maybe giving up on family, giving up on business, giving up on career, giving up on whatever in life. So the question uh, we need to ask ourselves right now is, uh, what stage am I and what have I picked from this? Uh, yeah, we welcome discussions, welcome uh, sharing uh, from that text. Uh, what is it that we are picking? Uh, I tend to think that disappointments are a part of life. We will be disappointment in relationships, family will disappoint us. I'm not married, but I tend to believe at some point either your husband or your, your spouse is going to disappoint you. You'll be disappointed at, at, the, at the workplace. 
at times, at times. And I'm saying this with so much, so much um, caution that at times you will also feel that God has disappointed you, although he doesn't disappoint us, but we have expectations. And at times you realize "Mm, whatever I was thinking is not what came to pass or something. So disappointments are a part of life. And I love the way of this started by saying that um, we have to develop a thick skin. I always tell my nieces, they come crying, you know, <laughs> like some, one, of, one of them is on attachment right now, and she is always calling me to cry and cry and cry. And I'm like, honey, you have to develop a thick skin. Mm-hmm. Those things are going to happen. So in life, um, we better be armed to face disappointments or they are going to break us. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. Uh, many of us think that we are unlucky when we meet trouble. And sometimes this is uh, what we carry in our hearts, the people who've disappointed us along the way, and we don't want to let go. By the way, part of the reason you need to be disappointed is so that you have enough enthusiasm to move on, just in case you don't know. Uh, many years back, when I was talking to one of my mentors and asking him what always keeps him going on, he told me that he has uh, three reasons. Maybe I'll remember all of them, but this was one of them. That I just want to succeed to disappoint the people who told me I will not succeed and the people who kept disappointing me along the way. So that's a good reason. When you meet disappointments, you want to prove that you are uh, you, you can disappoint them, you see. And uh, one thing I've learned over the years is if you carry people in your heart, you carry them behind you and you feel like uh, if it were not for so-and-so, I would be here. If it were not for this, I would be here. Then you will never, ever grow. Why? Life was designed that way. We may not be able to explain. But the same thing happens even in business, people could owe you money. Yes, you provided a service, you provided, uh, you, maybe you supplied something and uh, they, are, they don't seem to be paying uh, soon enough as you expected or as you agreed. And you carry that, that seems to block all the other ones that uh, ought to have come. Because in this disappointment, uh, a journey, we need to develop that which we call thick skin. You know what you want to focus on, it drains our emotions, but our emotions are our drivers. There is a way they drive our results. So we must learn to manage them. We must learn to know when to let go and how to let go and to focus on that which is important. Uh, we have listed there a number of the sources of disappointment. Some are nature, like I've listed there, where weather will disappoint you. Yeah, uh, you can read about it. Weather, you, you have no control. Yes, you see, sometimes you plant, you do all that a farmer can do, but then you expected it to rain, it doesn't rain. Yeah, I relate the story where I was setting up an event and weather was perfect throughout. And I anticipated a very good occasion. Then that very evening, it rained like it never rained before in Nairobi. I wondered where the rain was coming from. And for some reason, it, uh, it didn't do me any good. Yeah, uh, it made the event not to become a success. That's a big thing. So. If we, want to, if we want to proceed and keep growing in our life and ultimately live our dreams, then we must develop this attitude that that is part of life. And the more they become, the better for us. The more they, is that a good quote? Yeah. The more disappointments we meet, the better for us. Is that a good quote? There is a quote there that we read that disappointments are good. How many of us agree that disappointments are good? That's a good attitude. When I talk of attitudes, I discuss about that as well. (laughs) What makes disappointments good? 
somebody to share. Please. And uh, mm. I want to share about disappointment being in the sales industry uh, and especially selling insurance. It is, um, you can say it is an everyday pill that we have to take, whereby you, you, you talk to a client and they agree that they want your product. They even give you an appointment. They even fill, fill up your forms and they, at the end of the day, they tell you they are not interested after you have invested time, money, and all that. Eh? But the lessons we take home is that they make you stronger. As our OPP is rightfully saying, they catapult you to the next level. You find that, oh, I learned this lesson. Um, I will know what to do, how to answer, and uh, how just to go around it. So disappointments really uh, help us have those uh, inner muscles that uh, you can face anything. Thank you, Liz, for that. I think you're done. So somebody else would like to share. Disappointments are giving us muscles. That's what Liz is telling us. And it's an everyday pill in sales business. And that's good. That's a beautiful thing. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Happy new week. Happy new day. Disappointment. Yes, Disappointments are bad because they are bad, but they're also good because they are bad. Why? They make us open our minds to the other side, to think outside the box. They help us to to the they help to challenge us to to uh, make today to today better for tomorrow with that experience of yesterday where we were disappointed. I still remember one of the one of the biggest challenges I think I had as a professional when I lost my when I had lost my job at uh, in Kisumu because uh, of uh, you know there's in in, in journalism there's something called era of uh, commission or omission. So when you miss a story. A big story that is becomes a page one story in the news in a in a rival newspaper. That one you you'll be reprimanded, and vice versa. But if you if you scoop them, that's a word we use in journalism. Your boss will smile at you, not necessarily tell you you've done a good job because they say that's why you paid a salary. But that uh, challenge ended up helping me because I had thirty days of uh, being on leave, compulsory leave without pay. But then. So I use that opportunity to just reflect on my my career, my my uh, personal life, even spiritual life, and even I started I, I, I attempted to read the Bible cover to cover. But you know, when your mind is so disturbed, even when you read the Bible, uh, the Bible does not have only good good stories. Some of them are very harsh about the immorality, the genocide, you know. Anyway, I didn't make it, but the good thing at the end of the 30 days, my appeal was received and they accepted it. And when I went back to work, I was like rejuvenated. So that challenge helped me even work even better and smarter. So I look at uh, disappointments like the night. God has created day and night, but some of us think that we should just have the day only, don't have the night, so that you just things are just smooth, smooth, smooth. They won't work like that. Life is a, is a journey, we must enjoy it. And we know that the, like the super highway I used yesterday, it's not super, they call it what, expressway. Yeah? There's a price. Yes. If you want to have it very smooth like that, with a leap of 350 from Westlands to Mlolong. Otherwise, if you don't want to pay for the ride, yeah? for the super expressway ride, you know, to me, Okochini, you spend more time, you may spend more fuel, and you, you're stressed with matatus and tankers. So uh, let's look at our challenge as an opportunity to get better, you know, to, to bring ourselves down. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I love what you've, uh, you've said. There is always a price there to pay. And uh, you there is day and night. You cannot imagine, you know, Along the way, I started thinking, why did God allow disappointments to be coming in, all the troubles? Then I imagined a life which is trouble-free, a life which is all, everything is bliss. 
I realized it wouldn't be exciting. We won't grow. As somebody has said there, Olewe, that uh, disappointments make us innovative. They make us creative and coming up with better solutions. I remember when I was, uh, uh, when I had started the business, I asked myself, I prayed, but then one of my uh, teachers told me, if you are, if you are not growing, if you are not uh, seeing many problems, then know that you are not growing. He said, you should ask God to give you more problems. Then you will grow. If you are not seeing problems, by the way, check around. <laughs> Some of the people who've really done great in business, they've seen more problems. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I prayed that I should see more problems so that I can learn from experience and then I can always share experience uh, my experience with people and uh, the people who are looking up to me and for some reason i also got enough problems that people can enough of them that people can get in most businesses and that has enabled me to gain a lot of wisdom a lot of experience that i share with people simple practicable examples and they find them usable in their businesses in their lives in their situations thank you very much Zuhura, you can say that which you say. Good to see you. You, you can speak, you're already unmuted. Yeah, I can say disappointment makes them uh, want to be strong and realize that they can do better than they had done. Yeah. Yes, it's through disappointments that we grow strong. Somebody, a friend of mine, used to give a poem called Push. Yes, Push, P-U-S-H. And uh, I loved this poem. He, he kept, uh, he was talking about uh, somebody who was instructed by God to push a certain wall. And this guy pushed, 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 and after a long time, he was disappointed, dejected, and uh, uh, feeling like uh, quitting. He went and complained to God. You told me to push. I've been doing this all the years. It's never moved an inch. Then God told him, you know, I told you to push, but I didn't say that it should move. But now look at yourself. Look at the muscles you, uh, you've gained. Look at how, how you've been able to grow out of this. That's the way life is. <laughs> Sometimes we are given those things, those troubles to challenge us, to make us brighter, to make us more resilient, and to be able to handle better situations ahead of us. One thing we need to know is troubles don't come to trouble us. They come to train us. Troubles come not to trouble us, but to train us. And that's why we need to have an open mind about problems. When they come, we welcome them with a positive attitude. And we should also know that we are the right people to receive those problems. Ask yourself, why not you? Why do you want others to experience them and not you? When they experience them, they are going to be wiser than you. They are going to be even uh, more uh, enabled, more tutored, prepared, and all that. So. Uh, if people are experiencing them, you should experience them. And with this attitude, you will conquer the world. You will conquer anything. When troubles come, you have a positive attitude about them. You don't groan about them and sit down and crying throughout because then you are not going to grow. You see? So having that welcoming attitude, you welcome troubles as they come. You welcome disappointments. When your friends disappoint you, you know, well, that is the way it is. It's a way of life. People will betray you. I have listed a lot of stories there about the same. So one thing is they make us uh, learn. The disappointments are going to make us uh, learn new ideas, new skills, and become creative, as we've been told. Disappointments are going to make us more independent. You know, enough of us can rely on our relatives or on our friends. Yeah? This person telling you, start this business. I will give you an order. I will be your first customer. Yeah, then they don't do it. Or something happens to them and they are really unable to do it. <laughs> you see, that's part of disappointment. And you may end up st uh, starting to blame everybody else. Remember, blame game doesn't lead to any growth. 
Three things I was taught to avoid, and I've learned that it's true. Blaming people, that is condemning, uh, co complaining, condemning, and criticizing. Three things, they bring for you a negative mental attitude. And remember, negative can only be get negative. So three things to avoid. Don't complain, don't condemn, don't criticize. You will always have a super attitude. Everything that comes to you, you say, I'm the right person to receive this problem because I can handle it. And you will always handle problems. You will see the, light, the right side, the, 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 uh, the sunny side of uh, every disappointment. Yes, uh, and uh, uh, as Noel told us, sometimes we feel like God has let us down. Yeah, that, that's, uh, you cannot fight God. <laughs> Maybe there is also something we didn't do. So uh, we need to find out at every disappointment point, we need to find out what was I assuming? <laughs> what is it that I was assuming? And uh, uh, what didn't I know? Yeah, is there something I didn't know that I should know so that next time I can handle it better? You see, and uh, uh, you find out the lessons, something good in everything you see. I love a, 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 a song called I Have a Dream. I Have a Dream, a song to sing. Yes, to make me cope with anything. If you see the wonder of a fairy tale, <laughs> yeah, and all that, I know most of you know it. So, uh, somebody else would like to share. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Susan. Uh, disappointment, just as Paul Peter said, that it's 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 enables us to see what did we see, what we did we not do. When I'm one of those people who disappointed Paul Peter, I remember in network marketing, and I remember. That was the first times I was getting. <laughs> that is where you knew one another. That was the first times I was getting into sales. It was a time I never, I never got comfortable with. But from there, I came to learn that everything done, if not sold, uh, it, it 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 makes no difference. Otherwise, it will have not been uh, produced. And then at that time. Uh, I, I I I was learning it, and then it was like, no, I need cash. You know. Remember moving even to Britain, selling insurance. But out of that, fail, those failures, I came to learn that uh, my plan didn't take, uh, had a, a lot of assumptions. And then as I grew, now uh, coming back again now to the desk of sales under, the, under marketing again at a, le a broader level, uh, studying marketing, I came to learn that there's what we call uh, contingency plan. All this time that I got into sales, I didn't have a contingency plan and I didn't know it's all, always exist. As I continue with marketing, when you go to strategic management, you come to learn that as you deal with SWOT analysis, uh, you should concentrate on your strength and the opportunity how to tap them. Then I was like, oh, Susan, these are the things that made me not make it in network marketing and made me not make it in selling insurance. And now at the desk of marketing, now I need to have them and know how to handle them because these are the reasons why I have had those two failures. Because those two failures to me were disappointments because at that time, uh, I really needed the freedom that now I have the freedom of not of eight to 11, I didn't want it because I'm not a person of begging for off. Uh, I'm sick, I'm going to do this, I need two hours off. And then you start arguing about this off. And then when you are tired, you feel like meditating, you can't take an off. So these were the things that were, were in me. But I didn't know that there was a way. But out of those disappointments, I used to ask myself, Susan, are you going back to employment eight to five? No keep on keeping on, but I didn't have a solution. So from there, I came to learn that this disappointment make us learn the assumptions. We assume that this is how things are. We never planned for in case of anything, although at that time it's always very painful, especially now when you've resigned and now you don't have rent to pay because you made assumptions and life has to continue. But finally, always done in any, in any disappointment i always check back into myself and by checking back into myself 
myself, uh, uh, I don't see the person or the situation as the cause. I see that there's a part that I played. And with that knowledge of a part I played, it moves me to the next level. I remember like yesterday, I had a disappointed day. I was uh, After mass, I was at a desk of, of figures. Then I was like, Susan, I'm the one being trained. And these figures, how could it, was, was how I was pressing the uh, calculator was, was wrong or was I pressing the calculator, not checking whether I pressed the, the figure of press is the one that has appeared. Why, why did I have to take this long? It drawn me very much. And I remember I, I became almost late for everything because I had to check into. Susan, you have to know how to handle figures. You must, your assumption of handling figures must have not been right. But your mind has been used to the system of, I have a calculator when I press one, when I press two, it will appear. Not pressing and checking that exact, exactly one has appeared as it's intended to appear. Then I came to learn that I need to be keen. And now that is a lesson ahead because that the disappointment of yesterday really dragged my day, like an hour late for everything. So I learned that I need to be more keener than I've been used to be keen. And then it's like, oh, Susan, every disappointment, every pain moves you to the next level, make you know what you assumed or what you didn't even know exists. Because at that point, you will look back and check, oh, may this thing exist? And then you learn from it. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Susan. That's why when you are looking for opportunities or job, people are asking for experience. How many years of experience have you had? Because that in itself should have exposed you to enough troubles, to enough disappointments, and so you've been able to handle enough. It should have built into your experience, and as somebody has put it there, I think that's the, um, somebody has talked, about, yeah, that's Zohora. Disappointments also give us experience. It, they help us to be able to uh, sharpen our skills, and so we are able to handle it better next time. In fact, I always view it as it's a way God communicates to us, preparing us for a, a, a challenge in the future to become better people and to be able to grow. And that's what builds our leadership skills. I, I, love, uh, uh, I love to talk about people being students of history. You see, uh, you can learn from your own disappointments. You can also learn from other people's disappointments and even the national disappointments and all that. When you look back, you can always pick what are the lessons that I could learn from what happened and then I'm not able to repeat them. I should not be able to repeat them in the future. So it's a good thing. And it helps us to rebound back. And that is what now determines success. Success is not about, if you remember our chapter two, it's not about you are hit and now you are down. I loved using that uh, symbol, that uh, example of a ball. Yeah, when you hit a ball on the floor, it bounces back. It is that bouncing back that makes you successful. It is not going down. So you go down, but you bounce back. And you can bounce as long as you go down, you will always keep coming back. Thank you very much. Somebody else wanted to speak. Yes, Eunice. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm saying that uh, sometimes when we look at others and uh, that experience that we have, it also helps us in knowing how they are using the skills for management and therefore we can be able to see how to sharpen our own and sometimes i've used this uh, sometimes i've asked myself how would karo mutuko look at this question when i'm faced with something what, what would she say not that she's a perfect manager but i would ask myself if this was given to her how would she handle it? And I look at other people, if this was given to so-and-so, how would they handle it? And you know, I give myself the answers. So the answers are within and the experiences. So the experience is so powerful when we learn from others, because if we say that we will learn from our own experience, then we'll, something that took me 20 years will take you also 20 years. Yet you can have shortcut in life that something that took me 20 years, you can learn from my experience and say, mm, and take two years or one year or even just a few months 
So mm -hmm. learning experience is a double-edged sword, not just waiting to learn from my own experience because that will take me longer time, but I can learn from other people experience. And so I keep telling people that in life, there's a shortcut. I can learn from somebody else's experience, then I don't have to make those mistakes. Yeah. So there's a shortcut. Thank, in life. You. Thank you very much. I love that. I love that. In fact, I love to say that if you, uh, I, I, I used to, uh, I've always discussed with people that you can learn from failures and people will find it very uh, difficult to swallow. When somebody has gone through trouble, go and learn from him. What is it that he did that caused it? Like right now, I think just a couple of days ago, we were discussing with some people and I was saying, if you want to vie for a seat, go discuss with people who vied and even failed. Ask them where they failed, what caused them to fail and build on that, you see? So you've learned how to fail. If you learn from enough uh, people who failed, you will have learned how to fail also. So you know what not to do in order to succeed. And by the way, I, I used this when I was uh, in secondary school, when I went back to school, like it's written there, when I went to form four, I didn't do form three. So I went straight to form four and I chose to, uh, I asked to be given that opportunity to just sit my exam. And I discussed with some of the friends, I had two of them who were coming to repeat. They had gotten a C plus, which was then not a qualification to university. I sat them down and asked, how did you get your C plus? Yeah, and they told me that there was no extra effort. It was just doing assignments, just doing what is in class, and that's it. I said, well, now I know how to get C plus. So I will not get C plus, I will get better than that. And sure enough, I got better. I got a B plus, you see, because we are beyond just doing what is in the class, if any. I read everything that was supposed to be read in that time and revised and everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was able to do it. So I've learned that we can learn from other people's experiences. And that is much better because learning from our experience, we've got to pay that price. And usually it's a higher price. Because as they say, experience is really not the best teacher because it will punish you first. Then you get lesson later, if at all. Not everyone gets the lessons, you see. But if you learn from somebody's experience, you come and sit with me and learn from me how I didn't manage to do a particular thing, you'll be able to do it better or how I did it, you see. And sometimes we only need to learn from people. There, We cannot have everybody sit down with us. And... Uh, we can learn from what they've written, yeah? I've learned a lot from different people through their books because enough people have taken the trouble to put their experiences down in books. But guess what? We'll only read all the other things, yeah? Uh, that are not adding us a lot of value, <laughs> yes? You can read from uh, different people. You read from... Uh, 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 successful people in business, you read from people who've done something, people who've gone through some experience, and you will be able to learn because you cannot bring all the people and ask them questions. You see, and even if you ask them questions, it would be just a few hours. But what is written, you can always refer to it, or audio recording, or video recording, and all that. Through such experiences, we are able to build into our uh, wisdom skill, into our wisdom uh, uh, artillery, yeah, and be able to grow. So I, I love that concept, learning from others, people, other people's uh, experience. It's usually a shortcut. Thank you very much, Eunice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, somebody else wanted to say something? I think disappointments are good. <laughs> well, and I was reading somewhere, if you do not have problems in life, uh, then know that you're going in the direction where the devil is going because in life we'll have disappointments. Right now, how, how I am going to treat a breakup from my boyfriend is not the same way I'm going, I, I would treat it if I was 20 years old or what. Why? Because right now I have 
built my like I am so built emotionally out of experience on how to treat them. So like um I talk to my nieces, uh, I talk to my nephews. At times a niece will call me, she's crying, what's up? I broke up with my boyfriend, why did you break up? And then she explains and I'm like, girl, okay, let's talk about it. So you realize that disappointments grow as, huh? actually, I'm sorry to say, which is a good thing. It's a good thing and a bad thing, but if someone, someone has never handled disappointments in life, there's something they can't handle. And I'm not saying that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that to put them down or what, no, but I am just saying, unless you have handled disappointments in relationships, in your career, even in your job, there and then you can, um, you have the muscles to handle other things and you can be 35 and has never handled the disappointment. When disappointments come, like that's when you, you hear uh, a lady is not interested in a guy and the guy goes ahead to kill them. Why? Because they have not built themselves and they, they, they have not built themselves to handle disappointments. Um, so I think the most painful disappointments in life, apart from work and everything, are relationship disappointments. And that is why we should really, really try to learn a lot and even teach young people mostly on how to handle disappointments. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, uh, relationship disappointments, they are interesting ones. President Ronald Reagan, Kevin saying something. Hey, that's a long one. You could just say it if you have the chance. Otherwise, reading it is going to be a, a, a tall order. Kevin, are you able to say what you are what you written? We've taken a lot of time writing it. Okay. Uh, there is a quote here in this book. Uh, there were two quotes. One was, "Every problem is a gift." Without problems, we won't grow from Anthony Robbins. But then there is one which I loved and learned a long time ago uh, from Jim Rohn. says, ask not for less problems. Instead, ask for more skills. Ask not for less problems. Instead, ask for more skills. Ask not for less burden. Instead, ask for a stronger back. Ask not for less burden. Instead, ask for a stronger back. You see? So uh, you are not supposed to ask for less problems. You are not supposed to ask for less challenges. You are not supposed to ask for less disappointments. Instead, ask for more skills. A skill of resilience. A skill of discipline a skill of how to handle it better, like Susan was telling us, you've messed in figures, it brought in something else, and people have lost businesses like that. Now you know. how. What is it that I didn't know that I need to learn? And those are things that that's a, a good analysis of how enough other people have been able to grow their businesses. And by the way, if you are in business, you already know that disappointments are a part of life. If you are about to start a business, uh, at least now you know, you'll be disappointed. Usually people have a rosy picture of how your business is going to grow. Sometimes when we are doing business planning, I love to tell people that these are just, uh, people love projections. Yeah, in the next one year, this is where I'll be in the next two years and all. Well, these are our goals and prayers, but uh, uh, there will be a reality on the ground. So it's always good to be forewarned, to know that there is room for disappointment. And uh, uh, like uh, one of those teachers, that is uh, Jim Rohn said, usually you've done everything you thought you were supposed to do. You've done the wedding, you've done the uh, uh, pesticides, whatever it took. Yes, you planted at the right time and everything. But then whatever happens is beyond your control. Earthquakes are not within your control. Yeah, we call them in, in insurance, they call them act of God. <laughs> you see, 
So disappointments are there. But the question is, what will they make of us? Will they crush us down? And so that becomes the end of our story. How would that story look like? That by the end of the day, you are crushed. It's not an exciting story. And imagine if you had a story that doesn't have challenges that make your life sweeter. If you were reading your own book, would it be exciting? Would, would it be something that somebody wants to read and reach the end? Or they would read the first few pages and drop it because that story is not exciting. There is no challenge. If you are watching a movie, you always want to see where there is the contention, where is the challenge and what is supposed to be overcome, yes? So that you are always kept in suspense. You're looking for a solution for this. And that is uh, uh, what uh, makes it sweeter. So that by the end of it, you see a resolution has been achieved, you see? So uh, this, is, and this is why, like the story of Jesus, it could not just end in the grave that by the end of the day, the guy was killed and that was the end of the story. We won't be having Christianity to date. The story ends at the resurrection, empty tomb. These people were disappointed. He disappointed the disappointment, <laughs> you see, that by the end of the day, we even sealed the tomb. We put in a big stone there so that he could not roll it. But we can't explain, he's not there, he's gone. And we hear that he's been seen around. What a big disappointment to all those people, you see. So disappointments will make our stories much, much sweeter. And that's why we need to embrace them. When we are telling experience to some, if you didn't experience any problem, you have no experience to share. Even if you have children, you have nothing to share with them. And this is very important even for us who are doing parenting. You can make your children to experience all good, good, good. When they reach the real life, they will have big trouble and they will be crushed, you see? So we need to build independence in them by allowing them to be real people living in real life, yeah? And that entails a tough love, what we call tough love. You build them. You're not going to baby them. You're not going to carry them on your back. You want them to be able to walk and become independent people. And that is uh, going to entail disappointing them at some point. Yes? And that is the way life is. So we've got to use such opportunities to be able to grow, to be able to also build other people. You see, I've done it enough times, even with my siblings. They want you to carry them, carry them, carry them. And I advise people this. I've talked to many friends. Oh, this brother of mine... If you continue doing that, you're not allowing them to be whom they should be. You're not allowing them to grow. You're clipping their wings. And so you've got to let them to grow. If you learn about the eagle's philosophy, yeah, how eagles train their children, they uh, start remo uh, re removing the feathers that make their nests uh, to be comfortable so that the thorns are left there to prick them to start uh, to make them start moving out yeah they throw them up there leave them up so that they can learn to uh, be able to fly on their own but there are those of us who will make a nest all comfortable they the, our children don't want to leave the nest you see then you have to carry them all the way like we say in parenting if you don't parent your children you're going to parent their children anyway, so you can't escape it. You better parent when you are young. <laughs> you parent your children. So disappointments are good, and they better be uh, used well, harnessing their beauty, harnessing the lessons they are in, so that we become wiser, we become better, we become stronger, and we will be of value. It will grow our value in the marketplace, and we shall be able to live our dreams. Thank you. If somebody has something to add, that would be great. Otherwise, uh, we can uh, close it there.